talk a little NASCAR ratings from the Chicago street course, as well as some news about Shane Van Gisbergen that could potentially lead to him being a NASCAR Cup Series driver in 2024. First, we'll start with the ratings portion of this. NASCAR scored a big rating on Sunday at the Chicago Street Course. 4.795 million viewers tuned into NBC to watch that race, the second most viewed race of the season outside of the Daytona 500, and the most viewed race on NBC since the Brickyard 400 in 2017. Obviously, that's a massive number, and that's exactly what NASCAR and NBC wanted when they built up this event into the event that it actually was. It wasn't a, it's not a bad thing. So regardless of what your feelings are about the NASCAR street race in Chicago, it was good for the sport because it attracted new viewers. And I know people are like, NASCAR does too much to cater to new viewers. And I do agree with that from time to time. However, as the older portion of the fan base starts to age out just because of life in general, you understand what happens, they need to backfill that gap. And right now, they're not doing a very good job of capturing that 18 to 49 demographic if we just want to go really broad here. Majority of NASCAR fans are over the age of 50 to the tune of 75 to 80% of NASCAR fans are over the age of 50, which is bad because Formula One's coming in and say they get 1 million viewers a week, generally 55 to 60% of those viewers are in that 18 to 49 year old demographic. That's what NASCAR is trying to capture and that's what they're trying to do with this event. Are we gonna see a plethora of street races come onto the schedule? Absolutely not. I still stand by the fact that I think we'll see two on the schedule going forward, one on the Fox portion of the schedule and one on the NBC portion of the schedule. And I think that's a perfectly good balance. It creates enough hype. It gives you something to plan for and look forward to and for networks to build around. So that's totally acceptable. And unfortunately, we had a rain affected race, a race shortened to darkness and a ton of discourse around it. Having said all that, at the same time, I think that the event was still exactly what you needed. You got a first time surprise winner that has come over from the literal other side of the world and sort of brought the two fan bases, I don't wanna to say together because there's some serious discourse happening, but it has opened NASCAR fans' eyes to Australian supercars, which we already knew about, right? From Marcus Ambrose and Owen Kelly and a couple other people coming over and, and trialing things out. But at the same time, it's also brought the Aussie supercar fans over to the NASCAR side as well and let them gloat a little bit, which is totally fine, right? Like that's just motorsports. What SVG did was was great, and we'd love to see him here full time. We'll talk about that in a second. But overall, it was a massively successful event, and that's why NASCAR and NBC were so hell bent on making sure that event happened on Sunday night, even though they knew there probably wasn't a good chance they'd get the whole race in. Was there like some financials involved on potentially having to run Monday with the city of Chicago? Absolutely, but we're not going to talk about that. At the same time, NBC desperately wanted to get it in because starting the race in a prime time time slot is great for their ratings and now they can take that to advertisers as they probably start to schedule more of these races into the uh, early evening uh, or late evening early night hours of Sunday and they can be like look there's how many viewers we're gonna get we can charge you more money now so overall I think it was an absolute success from that standpoint sure we all would have liked to have seen it go a hundred laps right although it would have been like three and a half to four hours which is a really long race but at the same time, uh, 4 .8, we'll just call it 4.8 million viewers tuning in is an absolute success. And if that's what NASCAR needs to do in the future, that's great. And I know fans will argue you, you could have seen a better race at Chicago because the Gen 7 car does race really well on intermediates. And I won't argue that. But at the same time, NASCAR would have been lucky and NBC would have been lucky to crack 3 million viewers if they did it at Chicagoland. There's just not going to be the hype around it because it's not happening in Chicago. It's happening in a suburb barely a suburb, an hour away. So at the same time, I understand wanting to see a race at Chicagoland, but people just have to understand that the financials of the event, the hype around it, and trying to drive that viewership number ultimately would not have done the same thing in Joliet as it did in downtown Chicago running around Grant Park. So will we see this race back in 2024? Hopefully. It seems like the city might be a little bit on the fence. Obviously, they have a new mayor. They probably are going to want to try to renegotiate their contract with NASCAR in terms of the financials. But at the same time, hopefully it comes back. It seemed like it was a fun time for everybody that was involved. They all survived the biblical reigns. Make it happen again. All right. On the Shane Van Gisbergen side of things, talking to NBC after the race, he mentioned that he's going to do, or he ideally wants to do another season of Australian supercars in 2024 and then come over and run NASCAR in 2025 because his contract runs through the end of 2024. 
His team boss, Jamie Wincup, the Richard Petty of Australian Supercars, seven-time champ, I think 124 uh, career wins. He tops the records on both of those for that series was talking to Fox Sports Australia, and he said that he would not stand in the way of SVG leaving a year early if that's what he wanted to do. Take a listen to the clip right here. Can I need the best drivers, but if any driver, engineer, employee come to me and said, hey, I want to, uh, my dream is to, to go to the other side of the world and do something else, then I'm not going to stand in their way, am I? I, I you know, I've I, uh, I want I want I want to open up opportunities for, for, for all my staff. If he strikes while the iron suddenly comes to you and sits down with you after Townsville, which we'll touch on shortly, and goes, Jamie, there's an opportunity here. Can I get out a year early? You wouldn't stand in his way. I certainly wouldn't stand in his way. So, yeah, I really appreciate what Jamie had to say right there because uh, that's how I approach everything, too. If somebody doesn't want to be here or if they want to try something different, let them go. Have life's too short to trap somebody for a year. Just let them go live their life and do something that they maybe want to do. He's obviously already won three Supercars championships, when, uh, Van Gisbergen, that is. He's won, I think, 89 races. He's got all the success he could possibly have wanted there. What else does he want to do? Obviously, probably top Jamie Wincup if he wants to stay there forever. But at the same time, NASCAR provides a challenge to him. And he mentioned before, too, that he doesn't necessarily love Supercars, but he also wants to race more, and Supercars is only racing 12 weekends out of the year. Granted, they race like three times on the weekend, but he wants to race more. And the NASCAR Cup Series schedule certainly provides you with plenty of racing. 38 events, 36 of them points paying uh, throughout the year. So him coming over makes a ton of sense from him wanting to race more. But at the same time, he'll be 35 if he comes over uh, next season. That leads him with, what, maybe 10 years of runtime to you know, have the most success in his NASCAR Cup Series career. Obviously, we know statistically Cup Series drivers are at their highest production levels between their age 37 and age 39 seasons. You could throw 40 in there as well. Kevin Harvick's a bit of an anomaly. Um, same with like Martin Truex Jr. But at the same time, for him to sort of be in approaching his prime, and he's never raced on ovals, uh, this is he needs to come over sooner rather than later is what I'm trying to get at here. So hopefully he can make that happen. Um, is he going to contend for a championship in his first year? Probably not. Definitely not. Ovals are just a completely different beast. I know people are like, all you do is turn left. Yeah, yeah all you do is turn left. And if that's what you think, that's fine. But um, yeah, iRacing is, is a pretty good tool to learn that it's not just turning uh, left. It's a lot of tire management. It's a lot of car control. It's a lot of understanding how the air works. And there's all things he's going to have to learn. But by year two and year three, I fully expect him to be competitive, contending for playoff spots, winning races, um, it's not a shock that he's literally won in everything he gets in because he's a really good race car driver. And I have no doubts that he could come over here and do the same exact thing, which would be pretty awesome to see. Because I don't know if we can send any NASCAR drivers down to Australia and have them run top five in the supercars race in their first event, or maybe even over the course of like a season. They might luck into one on strategy, but I just don't honestly know because... It's just a completely different style of racing. So I'm not going to get into the discourse of that. I think there's plenty of that happening right now. But hopefully he does make the uh, switch over because I think it'd be cool to see. And uh, especially if he can get into a track house car, a competitive car. Unfortunately, Marcus Ambrose got into a team with Richard Petty that was really only competitive on road courses. And that's just because he could straight up outdrive his equipment. And they were okay on ovals. But if he was in better equipment, I think James Small mentioned that if he was in better equipment, or Kevin Harvick, somebody said that if he was in better equipment, he would have won multiple races, at least into the double digits. And I definitely think he could have. So hopefully if SVG can come over, he gets into a competitive car and we can actually see that happen. So like, and subscribe to the channel, follow me on TikTok at break hard and Twitter and Instagram at break hard blog. And if Instagram threads gets released uh, at the end of this week, we're going to hop on there and abandon Twitter.